Ooh, uh, material setup. So, all right, what have we done so far? We're, we've basically uh, programmed our job and we've set the, the start from position. We set our, our origin point. Uh, we sent it to the machine and we've loaded it up in the software. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, in the keypad, we've loaded that file up. Um, so now what happens now, now is when you set up your material. Um, and, and that's the order I like to do things in. So, um, you know, it requires a bit of preparation and, and it's important that you, you measure twice and cut once. That's the, that's the key here. Uh, as you make sure everything's right before you hit that start button, it's really gonna save you a, a lot of money and time and, and frustration. Um, and so, you know, it might be tempting to go um, straight to using the camera. Don't, the camera, it, it's a nice feature. I love it. Um, I came from a time where there were no cameras. So, you know, I instantly see how it makes simple things more cumbersome than they need to be. Um, but then, you know, I find the instances where I'm like, wow, that, that really is a nice feature. Um, but to, to get started, don't, don't bother. Don't go into that mode unless you absolutely have to. Um, let's, you know, let's do it visually right from the machine. Um, and then you'll be the judge. But there's definitely several instances where a camera just takes longer. It makes you have to go back and forth from your computer. And for simple stuff, you just don't need it. Um, and here's a nice little workflow. Uh, again, uh, before you start a job, if you do every one of these things in order, I promise you, you will not mess up. You won't mess up. Now, this is assuming you got your settings right, of course. Um, but <clears throat> this will, will make sure you don't make any dumb mistakes, like, you know, just forgetting to do a step really is what it is. And I stop with step one is focus. Uh, so that's always the first thing I do. Material goes in the machine, jog it to the middle of the material so that you make sure that that gold probe isn't hanging off an edge. And then you go into the autofocus sequence, which again, on your keypad, you press ZU, press the up arrow six times and hit enter. And it's gonna raise the table up your material is going to hit that sensor and compress it and instantly going to back back down and put it into focus. Um, and the next step is you want to make sure your material is square in the laser. Um, and, and what I mean by that um, is, is you want to jog the laser between two adjacent points. Uh, so two corners on the material and you want to use the red pointer to just make sure that the material is not sitting at an angle. Now, it doesn't always matter if you're cutting, you probably don't care if it's, you know, if it's cutting something out, it's not gonna really matter too much. Um, but if you're, let's say you're engraving like a cutting board and you're putting someone's name on it or design, you don't, you want it to come out square. You don't want it to be, you know, turned, uh, you know, two or three degrees or, or you'll ruin the piece. Um, so here's a good way to square it. Um, bring the, laser head to your front left corner it makes it easy to see uh, and use the red pointer it's shooting right out of the uh, right out of the uh, a nozzle there um, and line your material up to it or or line your laser head up uh, however you like and then jogged all the way to the right so go to the right hand corner and it should hit and it should be giving you the same you know it should be on the same edge um, if you have to make an adjustment, you wanna just make sure you hold down the left edge or the, or the first edge that you squared up first as you rotate your material um, to square it up on the other side. So when it's all said and done, you should be able to jog left to right, you know, between left and right corners and you should see that red pointer just follow that perfect edge. And that's how your material is square in the machine. Um, so again, real easy stuff. You, know, you, you can use the camera to do it, uh, but hey, this is, you can do this right at the machine in a matter of seconds. Uh, and then the next thing is making sure your material is planar. And what I mean by planar is that it's on, a, it's on an even plane to the laser head. Because that's really what you want to do is you want to make sure your material is the same distance uh, from the nozzle as best you can anyway, um, across the whole workpiece. This is particularly important when you're cutting because it affects your focal distance. Um, so you can use one of the manual focus gauges we provided you with in your toolbox and you can slide it between the nozzle and the material um, and that's going to give you a measurement. In this example here, um, this would be 10 and a half on this step. So this is nine, eight. So we're looking at seven and a half millimeters here between the, the bottom or the surface of the material and your nozzle. Um, so, you know, again, if, if you didn't want to autofocus, you could also use that. Um, 
This is just an example. That's not to say your machine's in focus at that exact height. But when you do bring your laser into focus, if you grab any of those gauges and you slide it underneath there until it's snug, that'll tell you what that distance should be like. And when you're cutting, you want that to be the case around your entire material. Um, so you wanna make sure that distance doesn't vary too much uh, from corner to corner or to the center, uh, because if it does, um, then your material is not going to cut all of the way through. Um, so again, if you have a warped piece of material and it's bent up on one corner, it's not gonna cut. Laser needs to stay in focus, so that means your material needs to stay flat, and it's got to be planar to um, your, your laser and your gantry. Um, some tips for that, uh, there are, um, you know, some, some hold-down pins I've seen. Uh, I think that was a, a Glowforge invention that works really well, and you just shove the pins into the honeycomb, and it kind of presses down uh, on the edges of the material. Um, if um, you're doing a thin piece of material, you can use some magnets. So I've seen that, you know, magnets work really well to keep uh, thin stuff or fabric laying flat. Um, and, and the way you store your material is important too. Like if you order a bunch of acrylic or wood, you might be tempted to like lean it up against the wall or, you know, store it vertically. All it's going to do is over time, it's just gravity is going to start bowing that material for you. Um, so if you really want to have a good experience with cutting, Keep all your material flat, lay it flat on the ground. Um, if it comes bowed from whoever your supplier is, throw a bunch of weights on top of it. Um, that's usually, it, might, it takes a while, but at least it'll start to flatten out again. So by the time you have to use it, that piece of material is perfectly flat. Uh, and I will point out, we do level the table. So the table does, we do make it planar uh, before we send it to you. But the honeycomb, you know, it's, it's not a perfectly machined piece of material. It's not gonna be um, the same distance in the middle where it's softer and has less reinforcements than on the edges. Um, so it's always gonna be plus or minus a little bit. Um, and again, I say within a millimeter, it, you can usually count on it being a good cut, but anything beyond that, you know, you might wanna just you know, make sure you adjust it so that um, you're not, experiencing what I see a lot of, which is somebody's getting a machine to cut in one side of their table and on the other side, it's not cutting well. Um, and on that note, if you do have that happen to you and your machine and you double check and everything is the exact distance from each other across, then you're probably dealing with an alignment issue where maybe the alignment's not as good on one side as it could be on the other and you're losing power somewhere. Um, and then is, here's where you would set up your file, basically. Um, so once you've got the material in the machine, you've set your focus, uh, you've made it square using the red pointer, and now you made it planar and the material is perfect. Now you can go ahead and, and, and get that file um, set up. And the way you do that in the keypad is uh, you basically just press file, you jog through the menu and you hit enter when you find the job you wanna load. Um, and once you do that, um, you're going to basically um, set your origin point, which again corresponds with what you set up in Lightburn, um, and then you're going to frame it. So that's the whole file setup portion. Uh, here are two examples. On the top here, I use the uh, job origin again in the center uh, is one of the ones I use a lot. So that green box in Lightburn is in the center of our logo. Um, and then I did an example where we used it on the top right hand corner where that job origin is on the top right hand of our logo. And again, that green box, that's going to correspond with wherever you press this origin button um, in the machine. So just keep that in mind. And here are both examples. Um, so you want to decide first where on the material you want to start, uh, where, where you want the start position to be. Um, if it's in the center of the material, let's say this is a cutting board, um, then it's helpful to use that center job origin node that I showed you where it's referencing the middle of your logo or artwork. And you can even draw a little X with a piece of, you know, with a pencil or something, uh, a little dot just on the center of your material. That way it just, it, it lands perfectly in the middle. Uh, if, if, you're, um, if you're doing that, um, you're going to go ahead and uh, then jog your laser to that position. So once you've made that little X, then you jog your laser head so that the red uh, laser beam uh, is right over it. 
And once you do that, you press the origin button and that sets it. So again, that origin point you just set corresponds to our little green dot right here in the middle, right? On the, uh, of our artwork. So that's how, it, that's how it relates. And then if you press frame, it should trace the bounding area around it. So that's how you can just see like, hey, it's gonna, you know, that's where your artwork's gonna land. And you might press frame a couple of times just to be, you know, 100% sure about it. Um, but that's really how you do it. Um, and now the other case is, let's say you were actually gonna cut this out. Well, that's probably where, again, we can, um, you know, use the top corner, which is, which is actually really easy uh, to do. Um, because you can just go ahead and jog your laser head. Um, you know, you, this is the spot you can, you can designate. If you're cutting, you want to use all your material. So I, I generally start in that top corner, um, set my origin point, and, and that way I'm, you know, using all my material. Um, so it's setting the origin at the top right corner, and when you frame it, it should, it should land right there. Um, so there are two really popular examples. There's a couple instances where I've used some of the other job origin nodes, um, but very seldom. I always am using the center node or that top right um, node. Um, so the next thing you want to do, so you've got your material set up. Now you've got your file set up. You've loaded it up. You've set the origin. You framed it. Um, here's a good one. Now's a good time to open that window across from your laser to let that makeup air come in. Um, and once you do, press the blower switch. That's going to turn the exhaust fan on inside your machine. A lot of people forget to do this. <laughs> so make sure that's part of your routine. And then finally do a safety check. So basically, um, before you get started, put on your safety glasses, close the lid, look around the room. If you got a bunch of kids staring at you or at the machine, it's probably a good time to send them out or, or hand them all their own little safety glasses. Um, but yeah, you know, make sure there's nothing, you know, in the area and, you know, you just kind of want to look around and make sure like, you know, I don't know, your dog's not outside sniffing the end of your exhaust hose or something. <laughs> so, um, and then the last step is you're going to press the start button. Um, and you're gonna monitor the job. I put these two together. It's, you don't press start and walk away and go make a sandwich. You know, you press start and, and you wanna stay there and you wanna see what's happening. Um, and you also, not only are, are you gonna be monitoring for flare ups, um, which again, you can easily stop a flare up if you see it happen by pressing that pause button. And the same start button is, is your pause. So, you know, if you, if you pause the job, it's instantly you'll see the flare up go away. Uh, but you're also going to want to monitor um, how the how the smoke's evacuating out of there too. So keep an eye on that. You should, you know, as the smoke's being created, it should be exiting straight to the back of your machine. You should see it going straight there. If it's going up and it's spinning around and lingering and, uh, you know, if you could see the red laser beam in front of your gantry because, it, you know, it's, it's hitting the, all that smoke, that, that means there's something wrong with, with you, the way you have your exhaust system set up. And you might want to, you know, call us up and, and we can help you out with, you know, coming up with a better way to exhaust. Um, but yeah, you don't, you don't want smoke lingering inside of the machine. Um, again, it gets in the way of the laser beam and, and it causes you to lose power. 